very, very precise for the last topic of the day, which is going to be by none other than the sine qua non of uh, the pediatric arena, our Guru Andronacharya, Dr. Amdekar. He has no need for introduction, but as a mark of gratitude, I have to say several things. One, he is balanced, receptive, cooperative, a seeker of peace, very soft-spoken, with serene expression, humility, and all this flow naturally from him. That is his eminence. He is the abandonment of lead by example. In a teaching hospital for more than four decades, but his evergreen exterior will belie this. He has fine-tuned the art of focusing on the Hutchison and Hunter manner in which we should go about our day-to-day -day medicine with sensitizing thinking abilities, maximizing clinical acumen, evaluation, and only then arriving at a diagnosis. Throughout this fever session, that has been the core of the whole thing. And only after that do we go to investigations and the rest of the protocols. I would like one small slide put up, Palni Raman, please. This is regarding the topic which our revered guru is going to talk about. I just liked this slide which I've done and I hope Dr. Amdekar also would like it. I'm being very presumptuous, I think. As we can see from there, I think as our responsibility, we have to be worthy of our calling as healers. And just like Hippocrates had said long ago in Latin, I put it up in English because already people say my English is not uh, really uh, decipherable. So he says, if you cannot cure, do not kill or hurt, at least to try to alleviate suffering. So we should use all our abilities to heal with sensitivity, rationality, and knowledge. If we live up to this calling as a healer, then life will be worth living, a life worthy for us, for our clientele, for our clientele's families, and our families. I think I would request Dr. Amdekar to now take center stage, please. A big round of a standing applause to him. Standing ovation, please. Thank you. Well, I think uh, <clears throat> over years of practicing medicine, I started feeling uh, have we really stood up to what the community expects out of us? And therefore, I decided to talk to you about how I look at how we should live life worth living as a good doctor. <coughs> I think ours is a profession where people expect a lot of humane approach. Though every citizen must behave the same way, but somehow we are directly confronted with life and death and that happens only once and to that extent I'm sure that the people expect something much different. I'll give you my view, a little philosophical view at this age, what life is and what a life of a doctor should be. I think life is a journey by itself, it's not a destination and if you really look at every journey it should begins with a dream and we mostly dreamt of doing something, joining medicine, becoming a doctor, and also trying to do something uh, different for the community. But I think it's important that you must know what you want out of life. And the major issue is, do you want a success or do you want a happiness? Now, I think these two terms are so much different to kind of even define but many people have defined success in so different ways that the one author has said that success is a side effect which is unintended. So unintended side effect of an act 
that you do for anyone other than yourself. So you did something good for others, you did not intend some benefit and that unintended benefit is a success. Somebody has said, success is you try to get by hook and crook what you want. That is a success. But somebody else said that happiness is you want what you get. So today you had only few patients, you could go home early, so you could enjoy to be with your family, you are happy. Tomorrow you get a lot of patients, you got a lot of money, you are also happy. So you, you need to kind of uh, feel happy and be happy with what you get rather than you try to get something. And I'm sure we need both in good proportion. So we need to set our goals clearly. They should be specific, measurable, attainable. They should be relevant and time bound. And I think the priorities, besides, we need to know exactly what road we need to take. But don't forget that purpose of life is to be useful, honorable, compassionate. And I think that is what we really mean. And life is what we perceive. After all, somebody thought I was successful. That's his perception. But happiness is my own perception. He doesn't find me happy or not happy. So happiness is your own perception. Success is somebody else's perception. That may be totally wrong. Don't go by that other's perception. And I think it's, it's just the way one perceives. In fact, uh, Ian Bell was one of the big viol violinists in UK. Eh? And people would pay 100 pounds to hear him in Albert Hall. He was made to perform in a metro as a beggar. And nobody bothered to even listen to his melodies. Perception. Okay. When he performs on the stage, people go and clap. When he's made to stand there as a beggar and playing the same tunes, no passerby also could really want to know what he is or who is. So perception is so much that I think the life is best for those who enjoy. So we must enjoy our life, whatever way we are in. It's difficult for those who analyze, okay, but it is worse for those who criticize. And I think let's enjoy so that we really enjoy life. Well, having said that, life lived for others is really a life well lived. If you look at the whole life journey, all of us have gone through largely three phases of journey. And I think it evolves and creates new challenges from childhood to adulthood. We look at childhood when we dream. A middle age when we try to achieve our dreams and old age when we introspect what better could have been done that we lost the pressure time and opportunity okay this is how we go through the phases but childhood is also when we have time and energy but not money in middle age you have money and energy but no time and in an old age you have money and time but no energy. What do you do? Okay. You are missing one of the three all the time. So the point is that you can't go after just two of them. Unless all three are present, you can, can't enjoy life. And when young, you lose health to collect wealth. And thereafter, when old, you lose all that wealth to regain health. Why did you lose health and then regain health by spending money that you made? And I think money always brings a lot of problem, therefore, it's not just the money. Money is a necessity. Okay, but later on, it also becomes a means of destruction. And simplicity is a making journey of life with baggage just enough. See, you need money, there is no question about it. But when it is too much, it's also destroying. See, the ship sails because there is water all over. But when that water comes in the ship, it sinks. So there is a limit to all that and I think most of us at some time or another start working for that money but we need to know that if not you, your next generation is spoiled because you have a lot of money. But life journey is not easy. It's like a roller coaster. Someday you are elated, someday you are dejected. 
And I think this is the way the life really goes on. And life has a measure of sorrow that awakens us. Failure and rejection that offers new opportunities. So even if you have a rejection, it's only probably because you have some new opportunity waiting. And there are several such examples in this. You know Mr. and Mrs. Stanford, who were almost retired, happened to be on a vacation at Boston. And Mr. Stanford thought that he should donate all his wealth to his alma mater at the MIT and Harvard and probably make good to the institution that made him. They were on a vacation. Mr. Stanford had a not shaved, he had a funny cap, and they decided to walk into the director's office without an appointment. When the secretary asked them whether they had an appointment, he said no, but he would not mind waiting the whole day. In case the director has time, he would be happy to meet him. Secretary was quite amused. Funny looking couple, old couple, ready to m wait the whole day and not mind even if not seen. She goes inside and tells the director that there's some funny couple who says they're ready to wait the whole day. Even the director was amused. He decided to call them in. And the couple walked in and he said, I have been an alumni of this institute and I want to donate all my wealth. The director looked at him and thought, that he would probably donate a few dollars. So director said, we have enough money. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Sanford was dejected. He had come with donating the entire wealth of his. He came out. His wife saw him very unhappy. His wife said, if your alma mater doesn't want your wealth, why don't you start our, your own university? That's how Stanford University came up. And today the Stanford University stands parallel to the one of the best universities. Had that director not rejected his offer, we would not have seen a Stanford University. Look at how then rejection comes in. And life is all experiment there. And I think more the experiment is better is the life. See, the road to life twists and turns. Happiness, growth, interaction, love, fear, pain, hardship. We have all gone through that, but hard times are like a washing machine. What does the washing machine do? Spins and churns and twists and squeezes, but finally comes out bright and clean. So our life also goes through all that. And finally we expect that we will still come out with clean. And somebody has said life is a game. Play with passion and enjoy it and do your best. Forget the results, it's a game after all. Somebody has said even it's like a tennis game. What is a tennis game? You serve well, so life also you serve well. And you return well. Whatever you got, you return well. You play cool. But don't forget, the tennis game starts with love all. Okay, life, life is like a tennis game, you know. Start with love all, receive well, okay, return well, serve well. Somebody said life is like a piano. It has a black and also the white keys. And unless you combine both, you can't create a great melody. So also in life, you have a happiness, pleasure, you have some pain, and unless you have both of them, the life will not be really. And therefore, I think we all should repair, be prepared for transition from vibrant health to chronically disabled life. You know, you can't go on doing all the time what you did and even then enjoy. Getting old is a privilege. Somebody said in the morning, I think Shuvar said that. Okay. Getting old is a privilege which not many have in India. Okay. Many perish at the end of one year, five years. Okay. And somebody said, therefore, you are privileged that you are getting old. Don't complain of pains here and pains there. But finally it says, don't worry, it doesn't last too long. <laughs> so so yeah, just tolerate that for a while, okay. Uh, so be responsible for your own life. Okay, don't blame anyone for life. Okay, good person gives you happiness. A bad person, an experience. And a worse person, a lesson to learn. So you learn from everyone. And avoid one letter word I. Instead, always use two letter word we. 
overcome three letter word ego instead follow four letter word love ego is like a sword with both side edges the outer edge cuts away your popularity and an inner edge hurts your conscience so ego is bad and i think give more than take okay and it definitely comes bad back to you in plenty there are again a lot of such anecdotes in the history and you must have known that there was a big millionaire who was very fond of hunting in the jungles once his 2 3 year old decided that he should also go with his father he insisted on that and the man carried his father son and in the jungles he got lost somewhere the 2 3 year old boy a poor farmer heard a boy crying and got him into his hut gave him a glass of milk pacified him meanwhile the millionaire found that his son was missing sent all his emissaries found the boy wanted to gift the farmer for having rescued his son the poor farmer refused to accept it and he said what i did was exactly what any human being should be doing so i won't take any reward for that a millionaire wanted to certainly reward him for that but the farmer would not meanwhile the millionaire saw another small boy the farmer's boy similar age the millionaire asked him what is he going to do in future he said look i am so poor i cannot educate him at all he will also help me in my farm then the millionaire said at least accept one thing i will spend for his education the farmer agreed few decades passed by this farmer's boy invented penicillin alexander fleming okay and not only that this small boy who was missing by then had become the president of us and it so happened that the president suffered from pneumonia and alexander fleming's penicillin saved him okay what the millionaire gave him education okay what was the return return saving life of that boy who was there look at these anecdotes when you give it comes back in many way but i think normally what you do is you give and forgive okay that's what you should do and often we get and forget so that's how we should look at it and i think patience and silence are great energies patience makes you mentally strong there is a silence emotionally strong and i think that is how a measure of well lived life is really love respect and harmony i recall once i heard a ramkrishna mission swami talking about harmony and he said that doctor do you understand hindi i said i yes i do a little he said what do you call harmony in hindi i said no i won't know he said oh it's so simple harmony in hindi is har mano yeah you accept defeat har mano sorry i am i am wrong if you say that there is a plenty of harmony the man made a point so we need to be motivated to lead a good life and i think motivation is a psychological driving force that reinforces an action towards our desired goal but we must have an intrinsic motivation what does that mean it it means that you are by heart wanting to do something you love to do something and i think you enjoy your work when you go to a clinic and at the end of the day you are so tired you feel you should not get one more patient at the same time you are greedy that no patient should go to any other fellow also <laughs> yeah i know a patient who told me that sir uh, so and so pediatrician is so busy but it's difficult to go to him i said why he said once i went to him after three days of fever in my child obviously there was a lot of patients he was tired okay and when my turn came he said what were you doing for three days how do you come so late so next time i decided to go on first day of fever and he fired me what first day of fever why do you come so early he said i asked him when should i come because 
the point is that he's tired no he wants to kind of get angry on anything you come late he's angry you come early he's angry and i think uh, that is what is happening but you should enjoy work and if that is so then i think it must come from within the workload results in you stress the you stress is an enjoyable stress you worked hard but you enjoyed and you are so happy that you could do it now that doesn't affect the coronaries at all but when you do something under duress compulsion oh that stress i think hurts the coronaries a great deal but i think extrinsic motivation is driven by reward by money by threat by punishment today that's what is happening okay today the consumer court has come on to us okay we need to be very very cautious and to that extent i think this will move that once intrinsic motivation gets started i think the habit sustains it and you enjoy working it becomes your passion it becomes your second life and i think you don't get get tired to do that motivation determines what you do but attitude decides how well you do and i think it attitude alone that it takes you to altitude if you see how what the attitude word means really if you assign numbers to an alphabet a for 1 and b for 2 attitude is the only word that totals 100 the luck and other things hard work etc is no match is the attitude and i think if we have a right attitude it really takes us to a big altitude having said how we should live life now i will talk for next 5 10 minutes on how to live a life as a good doctor now i differentiate a good doctor from a great doctor okay i remember one of my students i went to see his father was not well he had some abdominal problem old age chronic abdominal problem it was more of an old age rather than any disease so the father said that look my son is the doctor and i have been telling him get the best doctor of the abdomen to see me but the son said look what is great i have many doctors known who have got a big tummy but i don't know who is the big tummy specialist doctor <laughs> so the point is that great doctor and good doctors are a bit different to my mind what is good good is fulfilling the expected or desired and he commands respect okay that is good but what is great great is above average performance okay and is admired oh he is a great crook yeah that means above above average okay so the great word is used for both positive and negative but good is only good for positive so we want to become a good doctor and not just a great doctor so good doctor treats patient and beyond where is the great integrating art and science i think swar said this morning again art of practice that's not just science science is of course the base but the art of implementing science is totally different and i think a good doctor integrates art and science together great doctor treats disease with science alone and i think that is where art and science of medical practice come in art refers to using skill with imagination that's a special faculty all humans really have there is a science refers to a system of acquiring knowledge through study but important is knowledge that is capable of correct prediction and medicine is a science of uncertainty look at the funny thing science means certain prediction and medicine is a science of uncertain prediction okay it itself tells you that and that's why we debate like this and we differ we differ totally okay you call a liver on the right side no but sir my patient has liver on the left side that also happens so i think uh, there is a practice is just perform again and again okay and i think medical profession is ever practicing the other day somebody asked me sir are you still practicing i said yes i am not perfect what can i do so uh, so uh, so le- legal professions keep on practicing chartered accountant keep on practicing but others have become perfect long back they stop practicing okay 
I'm thinking of stopping practicing, hoping they will say, oh, he has become perfect. I know they will not say, so continue practice. Okay, it's holistic care really. Not possible without use of multiple human qualities. And what are human qualities? You have a body, mind, heart and soul. Unless all four are put together in treating a patient, you cannot do justice and holistic care. What does body mean? A knowledge. That's what we all keep on gathering, science, knowledge, without which we can't move. But there has to be a mind. That means commitment. I will do best to my patient. And that kind of a commitment. What does the heart mean? A compassion. I sit in their shoes and see how it hurts. It is said that the most popular and best doctor should have three things. He should be bald which means he must be wise. Then he should have a big paunch, that means he must be rich, popular, many patients go to him. And he should have a piles. <laughs> yeah, so when he's sitting, it hurts. So patients feel he's sympathetic and he's feeling their hurt also, <laughs> you know. So I think you need to be compassionate, okay. And uh, not, not just sympathy, empathy. Sympathy is at a spinal level. Okay, when my bad student came after the result and said, Sir, I'm sorry I failed. He said, oh, that's very bad. When he turned, I said, that's good. He deserves that only. <laughs> so, sympathy. But empathy is different. Empathy is I commit. I commit to kind of help him. And finally, the soul, inner conscience. Whatever I did, it must not hurt my conscience. The result may not be right. I may have miserably failed. But at least I know that I did whatever I could. And therefore, we must work with brain, but also with heart. And I think be honest, be transparent, be accountable, be responsible. In the morning, we said that best way to do is really to document everything. And I think holistic care really leads to devotion, which is selfless dedication. And that leads really to divine healing. And I think we, we need to really look at that. Art of medicine has many facets. Yes, you should be skilled planner of communication, time management. The philosophy of art of practice is really a patient hearing, honest opinion, explanation. Okay, patient not a bunch of symptoms or tests. Okay, and I think you need to be communicating in an A, B, C, A for accuracy, B for brevity and C for clarity. We need to be accurate, brief, and clear when we counsel. Ethics, of course, good conduct. Okay. I, I recall when a patient in a general hospital comes after five days with a board like neck rigidity and meningitis, my first year student says, how does this pediatrician not know this is meningitis? But he needs to be taught how on day one meningitis is without meningeal signs. It's only on day four he becomes like that and my student sees only that. He doesn't see on day one. So we need to tell him how it is. And we can't just run down. And of course, the culture, the behavior pattern. I think many times we lose our sense. We are rude to them. And we need to be very, very careful. And I think our practice should be to be intending to offer care definitely, cure if possible. Because we are never sure. And I think science of medicine is ever changing. There is a need for constant updating. And one author has said, one must run twice as fast to remain where we are. That means when you run so fast, scientifically, knowledge-wise, you are the, at the same place. And somebody else said, if you are not scientifically updated, check your pulse. You may be academically dead. So we need to look at all that. And I think we collect information that needs to be turned into knowledge and finally the wisdom. And I've already said once this before that medical science is a really dynamic process. Host is changing, environment is changing, in intruders, viruses, they are all changing. So there is no need to learn, relearn, keep updated. Of course, we should not have a high dependency on tests. And I think today there's a widening gap between a traditional wisdom and modern science. We need to bring both together. Both have had that. Much before the drugs and the science was invented, people lived a good life. 
and today with all modern era the life may not be as good what has been going wrong probably we have been using one and not the other but using both traditional wisdom and modern medicine and we have said this in our books that you should not have a misapproach management first if it doesn't work investigate if investigation doesn't work you ask him what are your symptoms and signs why am i not getting diagnosis so we should not do that and i think super specialization i must say that every super specialist must be an excellent generalist so all of us have a chance to become a super specialist but not at the cost of forgetting generalist and i'm i'm sure that if a child with a short stature depends on which department he goes he goes to an endocrinologist he would have hormonal studies if he goes to a gi fellow he will have a celiac disease okay so it all depends on where he lands first and you and me as general pediatricians have a lot of responsibility to really see how we can do the best and not get away but past and present of medical practice if you really compare as i said that older physicians worked more by giving personal attention and compassion and concern that itself comforted the patient and today we have a lot of thrust in healthcare with modernization and computerization but there is no doubt that there is an indisputable depersonalization we have started now treating diseases not the human being further we started treating tests not even a disease and now we treat the numbers not even the tests see the normal cholesterol level has been coming down so that most of us will have hypercholesterolemia so that we use anti cholesterol drug so i think this is what is probably happening we must offer quality care that is patient centered care respectful responsible to individual patient need preferences values see we need to look at what individual patient needs what he offers for example you have a neurodegenerative disease now in your practice you almost know that many things can be done but it's also important to know that many things done may not answer if they answer they may not treat and cure so depending on what exactly the patient can afford what patient should be advised should not just follow science alone and i think to that extent science based clinical decision analysis of detailed history etc is of course must but most important is safe cost effective timely and equitable therapy i think communication and counseling is most important and most of our us as indian doctors falter on that we are far more experienced we are far more intelligent than our western counterparts but where they beat us hollow is the discipline communication counseling and i think we should really look at that and unless we document we cannot make progress about that i would just summarize to say that strive hard to be excellent and rational in medical practice and only passion and joy makes it possible you must develop this as a passion try to balance between work and pleasure but the most important is make work also pleasurable so that you have not to really worry about that enjoy work that leads to perfection it's fun fun is an enjoyable distraction from stress and 3b principle begin believe in you and then become if you do that i think even you can make a difference nature has given us the opportunity let us not misuse it this is what we always talk about in the no steer program that secret of joy in work is contained in only one word excellence and to know how to do it is something well is to enjoy it thank you very much